Welcome to my channel, If Looks Could Kill, or welcome back to my channel. And if you are coming back, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't already started slacking off. I promise we're gonna get it together. You, you know, all that matters is that we're back. But yes, today we're gonna be talking about Nanny Doss, AKA, let me get the little notes. The Giggling Granny, The Lonely Hearts Killer, and The Black Widow. Yeah, she, she didn't kill a few people. Y'all gonna see. But yeah, so if you are interested in hearing about Nanny Doss and you're interested to see how I got this little look on my face, go ahead and keep watching the video. And let's get started. Okay, so um, Nancy Hazel, also known as... Um, Nanny Doss. She was born November 4th, 1905, and she was born in Anniston, Alabama. Let's get these contacts in so I can see what I'm doing. Um, Nancy was born to Luis and James Hazel. Mmm, Jesus. And Nancy was one out of five children. She had one brother and three sisters. Yep. Like I said, the family lived in Alabama. So one day they were about to get on a little Amtrak, little train, head to Southern Alabama to see some family. And the train decided to just come to a super fast stop. And Nancy just completely banged her head on um on this metal pole that was in front of her seat and she blacked out and just was kind of messed up after that she um since that accident she had blackouts memory loss um depression she went through a lot after she hit her head on that pole so Nancy didn't have um, too much education because instead of going to school, her father wanted all the kids to run the, the family farm. And Nancy didn't really care for that because she's like, I want to be around my friends and stuff. And he was just trying to keep me home and it wasn't okay. So Luis, which is Nancy's mom, um, they kind of bonded over not liking the dad. So when they would hang out, um, she would see her mom reading these romance magazines. And so that's kind of what she got into as well, but she had to keep it on the low because her dad was not having any of that. Her dad didn't let the girls wear any types of clothing that were revealing. Um, they couldn't wear any type of makeup and they couldn't even like get dressed up that made them any type of pretty or any type of like way. He wasn't allowing any of it. And his reason was because it would lessen their chances of getting molested. That's what he said. Yep. I'm all holding. I haven't done my makeup in a long time. I've really been lacking on my makeup. Been lacking on the videos. But I'm tired. I be tired and busy. I'm gonna get it together though. I promise. So as Nancy got older, she was really into, um... The romance magazines like her mom was and she was specifically into the lonely hearts column and that was just kind of her thing because she i don't want to say she knew she was socially awkward but she knew she knew she was despite her father like forbidding all these things he did let nancy marry when she was 16 and she had only known the man she married for four months before this. And the man she didn't married, his name was Charlie, Charlie, <clears throat> Charlie, 
Jesus. Charlie Boggs, Charlie Boggs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he was a co-worker at the factory Nancy was working at. My eyebrows are looking pretty decent today. They are looking pretty decent today. Charlie Braggs is this man's name, y'all. I completely butchered it. But anyways, so Charlie was an only child and he still, it, well, of course he still lived with his mom, but he lived with his mom and um, she was, she insisted on continuing to live with Charlie after he was married. She was like, I ain't going nowhere, so get stuck with me. So um, Charlie's mom stayed in the house um, with Charlie and Nancy and Nancy hated it. She hated it. Charlie's mom was controlling. She tried to keep all of Charlie's attention. It just, it just was not working out. And so, um, despite the unhappy marriage, they did end up having four daughters together. Charlie would just, he would just kind of leave because Charlie was getting tired of his mom and just not having a happy marriage. And he was going out cheating. Um, Nancy found out and she actually started talking to other men as well. And it just, it was not a healthy environment. Nancy got into like some real heavy drinking some real heavy smoking. She was stressed out having all four of her kids at home all the time. And even though um, Charlie's mom was there, she did everything for Charlie. She didn't help Nancy out with the kids or do anything like that. Nope, that's not what she was there for. So one day out the blue, in 1927 to be specific, the two middle daughters of Nancy and Charles died of suspected food poisoning. And this was really weird. Like, everybody eats the same thing, only the two middle daughters died. So I just found that interesting. But after that, um, Charles, Charles took his older daughter Melvina, that was her name. He took her with him and was like, okay, we getting out of here because your mother, I think she's crazy. She's the only one that cooks our food. I just, we should go. So he takes Melvina, but leaves Florine, who is their newborn daughter, with, um, with Nancy. I don't know if he left her because she was a newborn and he was like, you need to be with your mother or what that was about, but he didn't take the newborn with him. So since Charlie wasn't in the house, Nanny had to get a job at the cotton mill to help support her and Florine. And so that's what she did and she was making ends meet. And then in the summer of 1928, Charlie popped back up with his daughter Melvina. And was like, okay, well, I think, I think this marriage is over, so we should get a divorce, and we'll just go our separate ways for good. So Nancy agrees. Um, they get that little divorce, and Nancy takes Melvina and Florine and goes and lives with her mother for a short period of time. So in 1929, at the age of 24, um, Nancy moved to Jacksonville, Florida, and met this name. Met this name. <laughs> met this man by the name of Robert Harrelson. Give me a second. I'm looking for something, and I can't find what it is. 
So yes, yeah, she um, met this guy and married him at the age of 24. His name was Robert Harrelson. And um, things were good at first, but after a few months of being married, she realized that Robert was an alcoholic dr drunk and he would get abusive and it was just all the things she wasn't looking for. So despite the unhappy marriage again, she wasn't just gonna up and leave. So this marriage ended up, <laughs> this marriage, <laughs> this marriage ended up lasting 16 years. Yep. While she was married to Robert, her oldest daughter, Melvina, gave birth to a little boy named Robert and made um, Nancy a 38-year-old grandma. Yep, yep, yep. Young grandma. We gotta get these dabs in. So one night in 1945, after Robert, Nancy's husband, had came home from one of his, um, you know, late night party sessions, um, he was super, super drunk and actually ended up raping Nancy um, when he had gotten home. And this was, this was her last straw. She, she was over all the shit that he had put her through. So she had actually found um, one of his uh, like moonshine bottles. <sighs> and she was like, well, I know he's about to drink from this when he wakes up. So she topped it off with some rat poison. Yeah. And soon enough, he woke up. First thing he wanted was that drink. And guess what? Robert died later that evening. <laughs> she was not playing no games. <laughs> so in 1947, at the age of 42, Nancy met her third husband um, by the name of Arlie. And she actually met him in the Lonely Hearts column of that magazine that she liked to read. And they had only known each other for three days before they got married. And it's kind of, kind of crazy, but he ended up, he ended up being a drunk womanizer just like Robert was. And it just, she just wasn't the best. Oh, whoa. Y'all see that color? Hmm. I didn't know it was going to be like that. Oh, well. And in this marriage, Nancy was actually the one that was kind of, that was disappearing for months on end. And nobody knew this. So it was, it was thought that they had a good marriage and that everything was going smoothly and everything. Um, but it wasn't. But whenever, um, Whenever Nancy did come home, she played, she played like the perfect housewife and kept um, Arlie happy and just played her role, you know what I mean? And one day, um, Arlie died of what they think is a heart condition. <sighs> Who knows? It's her crazy self. I thought I got eyeshadow on my contact. Mm. So yes, he died and um, Nancy got a pretty nice check from his death. And um, the whole town was supportive because you know, she, she, she wasn't thought of to have killed him or anything. And so, um, yeah, everybody was like, oh, I'm so sorry your husband died. And she's like, it's okay. His time had come. So soon after Arlie died, um, they were going through his will and everything and come to find out um, the house had actually been left to Arlie's sister. I don't think Nancy was too happy about that. 
So a few days later, the house mysteriously burned down. But you know who got that check? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Nancy did. And she she banked it quick, too. And she was out of there. After she got that check, Nancy went and decided to live with her sister, Devi. And Devi actually wasn't doing too good. Devi was already bedridden and was like on her way out the door. So sooner than later, um, Debbie passed away and just because of who Nancy was, she didn't like to be alone. So she started looking for another husband. And so she actually joined a dirt, a dirting, a dating service called um, Diamond Dating. It was something like that. I know that's not exactly what it was called, but it was something like that. And um, she met a man by the name of Richard Morton. And they decided to get together and have a happy life, get married in Kansas. And they met in North Carolina, but yeah, they moved to Kansas and got married. And when Nancy got married again, she was 47 at the time of this marriage. So unlike all of her other husbands who had a drinking problem, was beating her, was doing all that, um, he, Richard wasn't like that. Instead, he was just, he was just sleeping with every woman that he came across. So, you know, I guess it's gonna be too bad. <laughs> but she just, she just wasn't having justice picking these men. So... <laughs> Now we know she is not about to be with somebody that's cheating on her. So she, she did her thing. And three months later, there was no more Robert. <laughs> and then, fun fact, but this came out that while um, Louise, Nancy's mother, was visiting her and Robert, um, she actually poisoned her mom and she died. And I don't know why she poisoned her mom, but she did. Now we all know Miss Nancy was not staying single long. So in June, um, in June of 1953, when she was 48, she married a man by the name of Samuel Doss. And he was a Nazarene minister. And he did not like that um, Nancy was into all these, like, romance novels and magazines. He just, he just wasn't very fond of that. He was like, no. When we get married, that stuff got to go. <sighs> But we know how Nancy gets down. So Nancy and Samuel married in June. And in September, Samuel was sent to the hospital for flu-like symptoms. And we all know what this means. Well, while he was there, um, they diagnosed him with a severe digestive tract infection. And so they gave him his antibiotics and they were like, you know, this is, oh my gosh, my glue is stuck and I'm scared. It's going to squirt everywhere. I don't think I have anything. Let me see. Okay, hold on. So, they gave him his antibiotics. Was like, you're going to be good to go. So, they released him October 5th, right? And he was dead October 12th. And it was... It's crazy because because he was just fine and then he died like really suddenly. Um, it kind of it kind of alerted the doctors, and so they were like, "Okay, um, he needs an autopsy because something is not right. Something is not right. Like we checked everything while he was here. 
I really like this brush. It feels good. So yeah, they gave Samuel an autopsy and come to find out there was hella arsenic in his body. And Nancy actually got a little sloppy and got caught up because she was trying to rush and collect these two life insurance checks that um, she had just taken out on Samuel. So the police arrest her immediately. What? Immediately. Okay, I had to. Sorry. She didn't even try to lie. She was like, oh my God. She was like, I'm caught. So here it is. She confessed to murdering, um, let's see, I had to write it down because she murdered so many people. She confessed to murdering her four husbands, her mother, her sister, her grandson, and her mother-in-law. Let me take these off. She fessed up to killing everybody. Jesus, look at my hair. Ooh, I need to give myself a retwist real bad. So, yes, she fessed up to killing everybody. Um, of course, they charged her with life in prison, but the charge actually didn't stick because I guess in Oklahoma, um, you can't charge a woman to life in prison, or at least you couldn't back in 1955. She had life in prison. But they weren't going to kill her. I think that's what it is. They weren't going to give her the death penalty. Because she was a woman. I love this stuff so much. Ooh. I didn't put no highlighter on. Didn't put no highlighter on. But yeah, so she killed. She killed hella people. She killed 11 people in total. She actually ended up dying in prison at the age of 65. No, she died in 1965 at the age of 60 from leukemia. I guess overall, justice was done <laughs> and served by the universe. But yeah, let me... I, ne I never get my whole like process on camera. I feel like I really like this finishing spray. Ooh, I think that spray was a little close. My face is wet. But yeah, that's the story of Nanny Doss and how she killed a bunch of people and got away with it and didn't get caught until she got greedy. Thank you so much for watching this video on Nanny Doss. I appreciate it so much, especially because, you know, I've been slacking, lacking, and, you know, we're going to get it back on track, though. So, yes, please like subscribe, share this video, do anything that you would like, drop a comment, say hi, I'm going to respond always. And I will see y'all in a week or so. Peace. Flexing on you hoes, bitch I do the most. Hey, I'm on the wave like a do-rag. When they see me, they be like, who, who that? My crown black like Kodak. Pretty brown eye skin, color like Kanye. Yeah. I'm out for the minute. Middle fingers up while I'm talking that shit I do the most, bitch. I do the most for the coast. All black, no bows. Pop bottles for the toast. Pop bottles for the toast. All black, no bows. Bitch, I do the most, bitch. I do the most for the coast. All black, no bows.